We're the Gregories, Chris and Christy, owner of Nimbus 1326. We started dating in fall of 2016 and were married in May of 2019. We live with our three pets, Maddie, Hazel, and Jerry. Immediately after getting married, we made the tough decision that Maine just wasn't the place for us anymore and that we needed a change of scenery. So we moved to Stratford, New Jersey. The pandemic hit, leaving me out of work. So we decided that it was finally the right time to execute our dreams and build our schoolie. Follow along on our journey as we turn this 2012 E350 shuttle bus into our mobile vacation home on wheels. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm Christy. We're the Gregories. We've met and started dating in 2016 and we're married in 2019. Uh, we decided to start transitioning into bus life last year and this is our story. Uh, I was born and grew up in Freiburg, Maine, um, the foothills of the White Mountains. I went to college in Portland, Maine uh, and started my own company uh, shortly thereafter doing pyrotechnics, which is when I met my wife Christy. Um, and I grew up in Wells, Maine, which is the southern coast. Um, and went to school up in Central Maine and ended up graduating a semester early so I had no idea what I wanted to do afterwards and ended up working at the school system with my mom when my friends convinced me to um, join a dating app to try to get myself out there and that's when I met Chris. Um, and apparently all he had to do was ask me about my day in order for me to actually respond to him. <laughs> so we started dating in 2016 and in 2017 uh, we found our adorable little Maddie uh, available on Pet Finder and we decided to adopt her and immediately after adopting her Christy decided that it was too much to split up our time between her apartment and my apartment, so we were just going to live in my apartment. <laughs> uh, shortly thereafter, we decided to get engaged. Uh, the Red Sox, uh, who used to be a client of mine, were very helpful in orchestrating our proposal, uh, and we were able to do it uh, right during the middle of the game, which was very special for us. Um, and we eventually were married in May of 2019. Um, you want to talk about Hazel? Yeah, so one of the conditions for adopting a second dog for me was that we had to finish getting married. So about a month after we got married, I found Hazel on Pet Finder through a rescue out of Arkansas. and. We adopted her, brought her home, and now she and Maddie are completely bonded and there is no separating them. It was shortly after adopting Hazel that we decided we were trying to make some future plans for ourselves. So we were thinking about buying a house, but where we lived in Maine, we just simply couldn't afford it and it probably wasn't going to be a possibility for at least a decade. Uh, home prices at that point uh, were starting between four and five hundred thousand uh, dollars for a eight hundred to thousand square foot uh, house, and it just and simply. At that point, we were in dead end jobs that mm -hmm. neither of us really enjoyed. I had 
shut down my pyrotechnics company uh, due to adverse business conditions, and I was working as an HVAC dispatcher. And I was working as an admin assistant for an agency that works with individuals with developmental disabilities. But we both came to an agreement that it was time to find better opportunities. So Chris decided to start a new business. We started Main Roots Audio Engineering uh, so that I could use my skills in the audio engineering side without risking further injury from the pyrotechnic side of my former work. Um, and because at the time of my original company, most of my clients were down here in South Jersey, uh, it was an area that I knew well and was very comfortable with, and I started making my way down here what, once or twice a week to have meetings with clients? Yeah, we started the process of moving January of 2020 and by the beginning of March 2020, we both had some sort of work lined up. Mine fell through unexpectedly and then the pandemic hit and all of Chris's clients pulled out of their contracts. Actually, it was within 72 hours of us signing the lease on our apartment here in South Jersey. Um, all my clients dried up and Christy had no job, but we had already committed to coming down here, so... We moved anyway. We moved anyway. Um, and honestly, that was the best decision we had ever made. Um, we're more than thrilled to be down here. We love it down here. Um, that being said, Christy got really lucky immediately. Yeah, I got really lucky. I was able to find work doing something that I never thought I would get back into. Um, within a month of us moving down here, in the middle of a pandemic, they allowed me to work from home, which is great. Um, I love it. Um, it's a booming business. I work for the mortgage industry, so we're constantly refinancing homes, working with people buying their first homes, which is really convenient for us looking to buy our first home. <laughs> so, uh, while well, Christy was able to get work, I wasn't able to secure anything permanent immediately. Uh, I am lucky enough to have some family connections that get me some, uh, some temporary work from time to time, but it's usually you know, maybe an hour or two a week, uh, just handling IT needs uh, for a small housing company up in New Hampshire. Uh, but other than that, I found myself with a lot of free time, and because of my history, I do have a lot of skills with my hands, and so we were I was sitting on the couch watching school conversion videos for weeks, if not months on end. Yeah. And then we decided to take a trip back up to Maine for the weekend, and we ended up staying with our families for an extended period of time and realized that with two dogs and a cat, we kind of needed to have our own space when we go to visit people. And we love our families. It was just, it was a lot all crammed on top of each other. And on the ride home, we had a serious discussion about finances and if we could actually make this a reality. And we decided that we were going to prioritize converting our shuttle bus over immediately getting into a house. Uh, so we immediately, uh, upon getting back down here, started looking for a bus. And, and bought one within a week of coming back. Yep, um, we ended up finding an amazing deal on GovPlanet.com. Uh, we found a used 2012 E350 uh, gas V8 shuttle bus up in Yathunk, New York. Uh, at the time, it had 398,927 miles on it. I know that really scared us quite a bit too, but 
the thing ran like a dream. Uh, we've had no issues with the engine. We've had no issues mechanically whatsoever uh, with that bus. It purrs, they kept immaculate maintenance records on it. And again, it's high mileage, but it runs, you know, like it maybe has 60, 70,000 on the, on the odometer. It's, it's a great bus for us. And it had some rust, but very minimal. Uh, which made the conversion process a little bit easier for us. Okay, so this is a good... Okay. So when it came time to pick up the bus, uh, we had exactly seven days from the time that we purchased the bus until we had to have it out of their lot. Um, I have never been that far up on Long Island. Uh, luckily, my best man and best friend, Andy, who lives down here with his wife, Candace, uh, was more than willing to help me as he was also at work at the time uh, because he worked in a brewery. Uh, so Andy and I met up masked up and took a nearly three hour drive up to Long Island where we uh, finally picked up Nimbus and we started our trek back home. Uh, there was a major accident uh, right around New York City so we got the pleasure of driving uh, the bus right through the streets of Brooklyn. Uh, it was an amazing experience with her right out of the gate. Uh, but again, it handled great. Uh, the one tiny issue that we eventually did have is when we picked her up, they handed, up, handed me one key and one key only, and that was the ignition key. However, it did not include any keys for any exterior doors. And we had to stop to use the restroom immediately after picking it up. And just to be safe, because I was in an area I didn't know, I made the decision to lock the bus. Which, uh, that cost us probably about an hour uh, until we got back on the road, until we could actually break into the bus so that we could get out of there. Um, but we got out of there, we got the bus back home, and we immediately started our demolition process. Um, there was a lot to it. Uh, they had done vinyl striping across the entire bus, uh, so that all had to be removed. Uh, as well as on the inside, we had a wheelchair lift. Uh, not fun to get out, you can ask my wife, who it, at least at the very end uh, was able to give me a hand, but uh, not the easiest process. Uh, so we got that out, and then we began ripping out the flooring only to discover we had corroded a uh, layer of aluminum sheeting that was sitting just underneath the plywood. Uh, and so once that came out, we were left with just bare rails, uh, which left me with several months of uh, laying on my back underneath that uh, shuttle bus and grinding and sanding and grinding some more until we got all that nice flaky rust off. Uh, and then we, uh, we went on to priming and then we uh, did our, our top layer of paint on the frame. Um, unfortunately at this point we actually had to take a step back from the bus. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I did used to work as a pyrotechnician. Uh, I'm a double amputee because of my time in that profession. Uh, because I was working on a job site uh, where some live deck cord was going off, I happened to step on some years ago and it burned right through my work boot and cut off some of my toes. And I have been dealing with complications from that ever since. Uh, didn't start off with all the toes, but at this point I have zero toes, still got all ten fingers which I think is the more important part, but... Uh, so my 
ability to work on it actually uh, stopped for several months and though my wife has amazing ideas for this bus I'm not great at the construction yeah her her ability to use power tools is somewhat limited you couple that with her fear of heights uh, there was no getting her up on the roof to paint so we basically tarped the bus for several months um, we had recently gotten back to work on it uh, and we're making some pretty steady progress on it um, but I had a meeting with my uh, surgeon about a month and a half ago at which point he looked at some x-rays and decided that he really needed to go in and make another minor adjustment to my foot so as of right now I'm actually non-weight bearing and we've been trying to do some other projects uh, surrounding the bus, getting it registered, um, you know, doing a lot of the planning aspects of what comes next. Um, you want to speak to what's coming next? So we are working on getting the old insulation out of the bus. There's a lot of styrofoam that got moldy and wet and gross that we were originally planning to just keep in there and then decided that we didn't want all those germs and mold and mildew just sitting in the bus with us. Um, so that's our immediate next step and then we will be installing the solar, working on the wiring. Framing out the rest of the walls and the and bed. Then, uh, and then eventually putting, or er, doing the spray foam for our new insulation. Um, we are doing, I guess you would call it a half bath, so we decided on a nature's head toilet, but we aren't doing a shower in the bus. Um, after talking for many, many hours about it, uh, we came to the determination that since we're not planning on living on this full time, that you know, simply having a pull down spray nozzle on the kitchen sink, uh, we can comfortably wash our hair and do sponge baths uh, to keep ourselves clean on trips, but and obviously use showers at any campgrounds we encounter. But um, we just didn't feel like there was a reason to dedicate that much space to a shower. So quick update, uh, I know we said that we weren't actually planning on living on the bus full time. That isn't entirely true. Um, actually, we're in the process. We've found some land that we're very interested in that we're going to be putting an offer on pretty soon. Um, we're currently renting, but the plan is to build a post frame construction house on it. And it's not like those go up overnight. So we will be buying some land living on the bus for several months while the house is actually built. So we will be living on the bus full time short term, but in the long term, no, we will not be living on the bus full time. Uh, so we just simply decided against it. Uh, obviously, like I said, we're gonna have a little kitchenette, so we'll have hot water. Uh, we've got uh, 22 uh, fresh and 25 gray, a uh, little hot water heater. Uh, and then we also bought uh, a Camp Chef stove, so we'll have two burners uh, for uh, propane cooking on the cooktop, and it does have a range. Um, and then uh, our solar system, because Christy is quite sensitive to heat and cold, uh, we went out and we got an 18,000 BTU Mr. Cool system. Um, to power that, it takes quite a bit of juice. Uh, so we actually recently sold off all the panels and a lot of the equipment we had originally purchased and we just received three 410 uh, watt uh, 49 volt panels, a 3000 watt uh, hybrid charge controller and uh, we have half of our big batteries. Uh, we went with bigbattery.com uh, and so far we have two of the four uh, 12 volt 202 amp hour batteries that uh, we had ordered. 
So we're excited to get all of that installed and uh, power up this whole system. We know it's a little bit overkill, um, but because of Christy's sensitivity to heat and cold, you know, not having it simply wasn't an option. Especially given our families are in Maine and we plan on going up for the winter and it gets really cold there and my body just cannot tolerate it. Yeah, we, uh, we have a secondary heat source for her in the winter. We bought a uh, diesel heater as well um, and then we went with a 12 volt, uh, 12 volt chest fridge. Um, for our food options for it. Um, and the other special little feature we're adding into our bus is uh, the over compartment storage area where they had the CCTV system originally for the bus. We we're actually converting that into what we have dubbed Kitty Kingdom. Um, we have a 12, almost 13 year old cat who doesn't like to travel. Um, and usually gets left behind because he can't travel in a regular car and we wanted to find a way to be able to bring him with us so that we weren't constantly leaving him behind but also make it so that he could be comfortable as well. Yeah. And we've isolated that space away from everyone else because I guess the nice way to put it is Jerry doesn't like to play well with others. He loves Christy. He tolerates me. Beyond that, you're really going to have to work hard to become his best friend. <laughs> but, um, well, that's us. We're the Gregorys. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please follow along with our journey. And uh, we'll be putting out new content once a week. Um, so follow along and uh, I hope uh, hope you enjoy uh, let's do a new one <laughs> because that was awful <laughs> uh, so that's us for the Gregory's uh, I hope you follow along and enjoy what we're doing here uh, and please like and subscribe uh, follow us on Instagram Facebook and YouTube all at Nimbus 1326 thanks